Zakat is an Arabic term that denotes the meaning of purification of wealth. Technically, Zakat is a practice whereby all Muslims who are financially eligible have an obligation to pay the poor and other needy categories or known as Asnaf. The rate of Zakat in Malaysia was fixed at a 2.5% rate. There are 8 categories of people who are eligible for receiving Zakat. They are Fakir, Poor, Amil, Mu'allaf, Fisabilillah, Gharim, Ibn Sabil, and Riqab. The Legal Framework of Zakat Management in Malaysia Malaysia State Religious Councils have the power or duty to collect and distribute zakat funds. Their primary duty is to see whether the zakat is properly gathered, dispersed, and managed in accordance with Islamic law. Zakat administration falls under the respective state jurisdiction of Yang Dipertuan Agung for federal territories and the Sultan or Raja for the respective states and the duty is firmly held by Majlis Agama Islam Negeri Ma'in. However, for Kedah, they have a separate institution for zakat called the Department of Zakat Kedah that is independent of Ma'in. In Malaysia, there are four different types of zakat corporation that handle the collection and distribution of zakat. First, a corporation has been created in accordance with a zakat law. Second, a corporation that has been created in accordance with a state law governing the administration of Islamic law. Third, a corporation that was created in accordance with a state administration of Islamic law enactment. Fourth, the collection and distribution of zakat are executed by Ma'in through its own unit or department of Baitul Mal or zakat centers. Issue of zakat management in Malaysia First, the absence of general standards or guidelines on Sharia audit. Our zakat institutions are currently referred to the Sharia standard of audit proposed by the Indonesia Ministry of Religious Affairs. The concern right now is the disruption of transparency since our zakat institutions are not able to produce our own standards and guidelines on Sharia audit. Without the audit standard, people will start questioning the integrity of our zakat institutions. Second, there are no nationwide database that integrate all states in Malaysia. The concern of this issue is that zakat receivers will have the opportunity to benefit from multiple zakat institutions from different states. This will lead to injustice since there will be violation of rights of other zakat receivers who are also in need. Third, Zakat receivers become too dependent on the next zakat fund. Current zakat practices by giving zakat in terms of money seem ineffective to reduce poverty in Malaysia. This is because we are only providing asnaf with a short financial solution. They tend to depend too much on the zakat and are not motivated to exit from poverty because they know that the zakat institution has their back. In other words, they will lose the opportunity to improve their life. Proposed Solution To address our three issues earlier, there are three proposed solutions from the article. First, the authority must create a specific sharia standard that administers zakat and wakaf to decrease the fraud and ineffective zakat distribution. This will regain the public trust and accountability towards the zakat institutions. Second, 
establish a nationwide database that integrates all states in Malaysia to detect fraud in zakat distributions. It will prevent people from benefiting from multiple zakat institutions and cause injustice to others. Third, using a capacity building strategy to prevent them from being too independent towards the zakat institutions. Instead of giving zakat in the form of money, we should provide them with certain skills that can increase their marketability in future. As conclusion, our zakat managements need to be revised because there are still a lot of issues that arise in terms of collection and distribution. Thus, in order to fulfill the potential role of zakat and improve the efficiency of zakat management, a high level of zakat compliance is very necessary in our country.